Welcome to part two. And there's a look at the belt path. And we're going to take out all the uh, old timing components and replace them. Make sure the crankshaft timing marks are still lined up as well as the cams. Radiator side. And the other side on the uh, firewall side also lined up. Now we're going to detension the belt and use this uh, threaded hole provided by Honda along with the battery J-hook which we've beveled off and we'll feed that into that hole and by hand tightening it back the tension off just enough to be able to get the belt off. So you've got that little jade bolt in there. Now you, now you can see you can turn this idler here. It's a tensioner. So now you can take this one off and take the belt off. And this is 14 millimeter. Okay, it's out with the timing belt. Okay, we're taking off the tensioner pulley now, which is a 14 millimeter bolt. Next up is the hydraulic tensioner. Looks like we have a couple 12 millimeter bolts there. Okay, I was able to get back here with a open end wrench. Not having to deal with any torque certainly helps here. Okay, I want to change the coolant. It hasn't been done on this vehicle. You don't have to. and You're going to lose a lot of it when you change the pump anyway. The petcock is right here, just given the general position of it. And um, unfortunately on this particular model, you have to take this bottom panel off to even get at that petcock. And it's uh, bristling with panel fasteners, bolts, etc. So here we come in from the passenger side. And it's right here. There you can see it, that white plastic lever there. Got a wrench on it. Broke it loose. It wasn't hard to break loose with the wrench. Now we should have soon some coolant through here. Got a pan under here. Hoping to catch it. There it comes. Let's remove the water pump. Ten millimeter bolts. Just a little forewarning. A lot of coolant's going to come out here, no matter that you drain the radiator. I put a plastic uh, piece of plastic in there. Didn't really help uh, preventing a, a spill on the floor. I thought that would just pull out of there. The pump was stuck on pretty good. I wound up putting a pry bar in, find a safe spot. Very nice. Covers all the different models. Honda, Acura. More Honda, Acura. Mitsuboshi timing belt. There's the ASIN water pump. Gasket already in place. The hydraulic tensioner. Coyo. This is the idler. And here's the tensioner. Idler. 
Okay, make sure the contact surfaces are all clean and then install the water pump. Take all five of them and finger tighten them. And the torque spec is nine foot pounds for the water pump bolts. It's a solid tone. Yep. Okay, install the hydraulic tensioner. This is a tight spot where I really couldn't shoot any video. Okay, we're putting in the pulley. Is that right? Wait a minute. Tensioner pulley is bolt is 19 foot-pounds. Idler pulley is bolt is 33 foot-pounds. Okay, finally the belt. Start at the crank pulley and work around counterclockwise, keeping um, it very taut on the uh, on the side facing the uh, radiator. Let's work it around each one of the components. No slack. Now we're down around the water pump and on the cam pulley on the uh, firewall side. And finally you should be able to just loop it around the tension idler So you know you've got this right at the end when it's all on here and the loose part, the, the slack part, is by the tensioner and that's going to be taken up when we pull the pin. Okay, we're going to double check all the timing marks and we did not need to take the J-hook to move the J-hook in on the tensioner in order to get enough slack to pull it in. So all our marks are still in line and at this point we can pull the pin and to apply the tension And the hydraulic tensioner is under, uh, well, a lot of tension, so it doesn't pull out of there all that easily. You have to keep tugging at it. Why that J hook turned in now? Let's see if the pin's easier to pull. <clears throat> okay, the pin came out off camera. Now we're just going to pull off that uh, J hook and um, should be under proper tension. Okay, uh, kind of awkward to get at this, but we'll turn it out probably with a tool just because of its position. And now we're going to take the crank shaft sprocket on two complete revolutions, put the bolt back in there, and we'll turn it clockwise exactly two revolutions and confirm that all the timing marks are lined up and that we don't need any resistance and the crankshaft sprocket is still lined up with the engine mark as is the cam on the radiator side and the cam on the firewall side so we're all done. Stay tuned for part three and we'll put this all back together. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos to come.